the PB&J bone marrow. It's a showstopper. The duck strudel, that was to die for. If you like spice, this is so your jam. I love like dirty beets. Sounds like a really good book. <laughs> yeah. I love dirty beets. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Total Wine & More offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, marketing consultant Brandy Moody plots a path to an upscale spot with an ever changing seasonal menu in San Jose. And event coordinator and actor Jackie Frankel leads us towards Alameda for a magical evening of Afghan fusion dishes. But first, account manager Sharus Wadia recommends a welcoming eatery named after the chef's beloved grandmother. In the Tenderloin, this spot is a bright orange oasis featuring traditional Ethiopian food that will make you feel right at home. This is Tadu Ethiopian Kitchen. Tadu means our grandmother, that's Tadelet Oda, that's the name of our grandmother. So we want the restaurant to be blessing like her cooking style, the blessing, eating together, family, traditional way. My name is Elias Shaul. I'm the owner of Tadu Ethiopian Kitchen, Tender Lai. So I was born and grew up in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, a place called Mercato. You know, the reason of why I opened Tadu Ethiopian Kitchen, when I used to drive taxi, everybody asked me, where are you from? When did you come? And the last question they ask is, where do we get good Ethiopian food? You know, that's my dream. I'm going to open Ethiopian Kitchen. Tenderline is, you know, it's reminding me of Mercato. When I open it in the first time, everybody say, are you crazy? Are you going to make it here? But, you know. We have passion, me and my wife, and we have a branch now in Mission Bay. The whole Ethiopian cuisine became very popular. It kind of lies under the whole concept of slow cooking. Um, the slower you cook it, the longer you cook it, it tastes better. We use very authentic spices, which is the key, you know. We're now scared to make it very spicy, very flavorful. For people who love vegetarian, they can just easily walk into an Ethiopian restaurant and then order more than 10 dishes. All we want is people come and enjoy it, you know, hospitality, like they go into Ethiopia. That's our culture. We want to make it like grandma's style. Saroosh, the, the story of this restaurant is pretty cool, isn't it? It is. The owner opened up this restaurant a few years ago and it was named after his grandmother and it's kind of an ode to her. And the word actually means lucky, doesn't yes. it? Yes. But you're lucky to have found it and lucky to eat there, right? Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So tell me a little bit about what you get when you sure, go. Sure, sure. Where do you start yeah, when you walk yeah. in? Yeah, yeah. So we usually start with the sambusas, um, which is a fried bite-sized pastry and you can either get it vegetarian, you know, we usually go for the meat option and it comes piping hot, it's delicious. It has a flaky outside, a warm doughy inside and you 
get a tomato chutney dipping sauce that has a little bit of a kick to it. So it's, kind of like an Indian samosa. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that's probably the, the closest. Did you have that, Brandy? I You're did, I did. Your head, yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I loved it. And in fact, um, the owner was there, the mm -hmm. owner of chef owner was mm -hmm. the, the chef when we were there, and he was kind enough to do a few vegetarian and a few meat options in the sambusa, and I loved it. I'm a sucker for the puff pastry appetizer, mm -hmm. and it was, it was amazing. Uh, we had both too, and mm -hmm. um, the, I preferred the lentil one, but they were both fantastic. Mm -hmm. Something I I learned is that they're kind of small and not the best for splitting, so you really want to order mm -hmm. a lot so everybody can have one. So after you kick off with that, is there another dish? Yes, yes. So we, so everything is served family style, mm -hmm. and uh, if you order two, three entrees, it's all on the same platter, mm -hmm. and it comes on a bed of injera bread, which is kind of their instrument to eat the food. There's no forks and spoons. It's right. it's all about eating with your hands and. Kind of creates and sharing, an, as you absolutely, said, it's family, you know, family style, and you got to share and get in there with that injera bread, don't you? Definitely, <laughs> definitely, yeah, yeah, and it, it creates an intimate way of eating your food. Mm -hmm. um, we usually go for the vegetarian combo. I'm a meat eater, but I think meat eaters or vegetarians would love this alike. You get a medley of different flavors. There's collard greens. There's a lentil dish, which is super spicy has jalapenos, We're, we love spice, me and my wife, so are we- Are you two spice girls? Yeah. I must have to say, I am a spice girl. Are you two spice yeah. girls? Yeah. Probably yeah. spice girl. Do you like to bring the heat? I like the heat. Yeah. I am a slightly less spicy girl, so some of the dishes which were delicious, but they were all kind of pushing the edge of my of spice, spice comfort food. level, mm -hmm. but they were delicious. But if you like yeah. spice, this is so your jam. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the collard greens, I can't believe I'm saying, were like my favorite thing. Goman, I believe it was mm -hmm. called. And I feel like they were just soaked in spices for months in mm -hmm. a really great way. And I kept saying to my husband, you know, it was like every dish, the lentils or the collard greens were the vehicle for the spices. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was just amazing. So yeah, we got the vegetable platter and I was, I loved it. And I just, I love eating with my hands. Mm -hmm. And did you have anything else? Uh, I got the kipo, the mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. kipo. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this was something I'd never had at an Ethiopian restaurant. And kipo is a ground beef dish, which traditionally is served more rare but I wasn't feeling that adventurous, so I did have it cooked. It was, I like to call sinus opening spice. <laughs> you know, that really like yeah. opened it oh, up yeah. for me and I loved it. The one thing I want to talk about because it was my favorite thing there was the drink, Telba. And it's ground flaxseed with honey and it reminded me of something my grandma would make for me, like an horchata or an atole. It was just warm and it felt like a hug in a glass. It was so comforting. We also got the lamb tibs. These are cubed lamb chunks and they have rosemary in it. They have garlic, onion, yeah. just outrageous. Those were the best chicken tibs I've ever had. There are chicken tibs there. Everyone was coated in all of these complex spices, but it was juicy and those were fantastic. And you went with a group, so yes. talk about that experience. Is it different? It is so uh, something to know, and I think of Ethiopian as the ultimate communal sharing food. Okay. So I brought a posse of six of us, and it afforded us the ability to order everything on the menu. We tried everything. Okay. Um, other uh, honorable mentions were I really loved that potato cabbage dish. Mm. That was so oh, yeah. tasty, and it was also on the milder side, so it was <laughs> one of the <laughs> things that I could eat. <laughs> and to scoop it up with that injera, the way that it all soaked in just made for a mouth-watering bite. Um, I like the red lentils a little bit better. Again, the yellow ones were a little on the spicier mm -hmm. end for me, but the red lentils were, I want to say, complex and really different. They didn't taste like anything else on the plate. Did you have any room for dessert? No. No. <laughs> no. I prioritized dessert. I have to. Yeah, you got to do, you're doing a little research. Come on. What Priorities. I So they really only have one thing, and it's their baklava. And it's not my favorite dessert, but theirs is really noteworthy. They serve it warm. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's got notes of pistachio in it. It's flaky. I mean, it's a perfect bite of baklava. Right. All right, Saroosh, right, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. Yeah, uh, authentic Ethiopian cuisine um, at an excellent value. Definitely check out Tadu. Okay, and Jackie? For savory, succulent bites, warm telba, and the best bang for your buck, go to Tadu. Okay, and Brandy? For a delightful spice journey, 
Uh, Tadu Kitchen. Yeah. Go. Go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Delightful space. All right, if you would like to go to Tadu Ethiopian Kitchen, it's located on Ellis Street at Leavenworth in San Francisco. It's open for lunch and dinner every day, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Located in Alameda, Jackie's Eatery is a husband and wife enterprise that serves unique dishes you won't find anywhere else. With a delightfully cozy atmosphere and warming Afghan Mediterranean flavors, this is Angela's Kitchen. My vision was to provide people with some of my favorite dishes that I personally like for the last 30 some years that we've been cooking in a friendly place, an open kitchen, people could see what we're doing. Hello, my name is Sabu Zafari. I'm co-owner of Angela's Kitchen in Alameda, California. I was born in Afghanistan. I grew up with fresh food, and always there is at least more than half of the plate is vegetable, and then you will get some meat. So the lightness of the dish, and all the freshness. I decided to kind of combine all the stuff that I liked about the French cooking and the Afghan food. So it's pretty much a California cuisine type of a deal. Marty's my wife's middle name. So we named it, bought after her. The restaurant is named after Angela, my daughter. And I liked Alameda a lot. And the residents and anybody who comes here, they're wonderful. They've been good to us. A great local restaurant, intimate, friendly staff. So give us a try. All right, so we just had Ethiopian food, and now this restaurant has an Afghan touch, right? Yeah. Kind yeah. of a fusion of flavors. It is a fusion of flavors. You know, when folks ask me what kind of restaurant it is, I, you know, I will say it has an Afghan influence, but you're going to be able to get um, a French onion soup there. They have a Caesar salad there. So it's across the board, but you will see some unique things. Bread baskets are sacred to me, and I haven't met one I don't like, but theirs is hands down my favorite. Mm -hmm. This focaccia, it's usually warm, but it's crispy on the outside, and it's served with this little cup of walnut cilantro chutney that I believe should be on everything. Did you have the bread? When I you did, went? and I totally agree with you. And the chutney, what I liked about it was that it wasn't heavy. It was like a refreshing chutney. Like the cilantro, it was like a garden kind of flavor to me. Um, and the walnut, you know, made it a little bit more earthy. It was a great balance. And the bread, again, I actually had to tell them, like, no, we're good. Because, like, they're coming with another one. And we were both, like, put piling it on, and we're like, we have to eat food. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that yeah. was, it was, the chutney was really great. Um, so we started with the duck strudel. Mm -hmm. And that was to die for. It comes in a, almost like a croissant -y outside, flaky, delicious, warm duck on the inside. And they're sitting on a cranberry wine sauce. You just kind of scoop it up and it's absolutely delicious. Agree 100% on the duck strudel. That was an interesting sweet. I'm a sucker for sweet and savory. That had that going on. And I love a good puff pastry appetizer. Mm -hmm. So it <laughs> had, yeah, it had all of that. And did you pair that cranberry wine sauce with a little wine? We certainly did. It mm -hmm. was a Tira Woods uh, Zinfandel, peppery, uh, berry, just a delicious wine to sip with. Right. I usually go for wine, but because I was studying for the show, because I'm so responsible that way, I tried the rest <laughs> of the cocktail. And I, it was a pineapple gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. And it was refreshing. It, I could tell that there was real juices in there. And it was just this bright, refreshing way to start the meal, especially over bread mm -hmm. and the appetizers. It was right. really nice. Mm -hmm. We had um, the leek bread that comes with a yogurt chutney. Okay. They had advertised that they make their own house chutneys, and so I just went with it on that. And again, that yogurt chutney was really good. The balani? Yeah, the mm -hmm. balani. That yeah. was, again, not too heavy, the right amount of, I like to say that green flavor of like mm. leek, onion. Um, so it was great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, their biryani is an appetizer and it's this lovely tender piece of squash on this bed of really tangy sauce and then it has that delicious yogurt the creaminess and it just again you kind of get that creamy tangy just soft and succulent 
piece of squash. Yeah, yeah, so I got the lime chicken, which was marinated in buttermilk. It was lightly breaded. You could cut this thing with your fork. Mm. And it was on a bed of uh, mashed potatoes. And this was probably the standout part of that entree. Jackie, uh, what else did you have? Um, I had the veggie masala, which was fantastic. It had big chunks of vegetable. It was savory, it was hearty, and it's served with this lovely rice, and it's one of the best vegetarian dishes I've had in a long time. Mm -hmm. But I also love the um, chicken sausage pasta. I don't eat a lot of red meats, and um, it's just, it has all of that succulent flavor and that that would be in a pasta dish. That's kind of where the fusion is coming in here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, again, I mean, and I don't I, I would say I would tell anybody don't sweat the the kind of cuisine because right. again, they just present good food and different things there that you're not going to see other places than than classics. I will say another standard is their French onion soup. It's the best French onion soup that I've ever had. They're so generous with the cheese that they <laughs> top that soup with. But then the broth is also creamy and so tasty and full of flavor without being overly salty. I got it, I got it, and it was terrific. It had a big crouton in the middle, caramelized onions, um, a peppery, beefy broth. It was probably in my top three French onion soups I've ever eaten. Yeah. Ever eaten? Ooh, yeah, high yeah, price. it was that good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What did you have? I felt like maybe I ordered wrong. You know, mm -hmm. like it was one of those things because I was expecting fusion. I was expecting kind of a concept and it was a little schizophrenic for me in that respect where I didn't really know where this mini was going. We got the chicken. Um, we got the meatloaf as well. I, I nothing to really write home about on that one. Mm -hmm. I would just stick to the chutneys and the cocktails if I were to go again. Um, and the bread and the soup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Did you have any room after we your did, dishes? We did. We did. And dessert? I think the the highlight was the dessert, and that was the uh, bread pudding. It was in a whiskey sauce and it had a little dollop of uh, whipped cream on top and this thing was, I mean, I would make the trip out just for this. So they well. also have a dessert that is one of my favorite desserts, the panna cotta that they do, which is rose water and cardamom. And it is just such a light, lovely way to end a meal. It's creamy, I love panna cotta anyway. I think theirs is top notch, but the flavor is just so unique. All right, and Jackie, this is your restaurant. Wrap it up for us. So for a really good bread basket and delightful surprises on the menu and lovely cocktails, go to Angela's. All right, Saroosh. If you're in Alameda and are tempted to try Afghan cuisine with Western European influence on, with it, um, definitely go to Angela's. And Brandy. If you're in Alameda and you want to explore an interesting cocktail menu and have an appetizer, go to Angela's. All right, if you would like to try Angela's Kitchen, it's located on Park Street at Buena Vista Avenue in Alameda. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. Post your favorite food shots on Instagram at hashtag Bay Area Bites and have a chance to see your food pics on the show. As a die-hard foodie, Brandy made it her mission to find all the hidden gems that San Jose has to offer. Her upscale pick features a rotating farm-to-table menu carefully crafted by a pair of South Bay chefs who grew up in the neighborhood. Located in Willow Glen, this is Bray's. Bray's Willow Glen really was kind of created in the idea of just doing classic cuisine with a progressive approach. Anthony and I went to high school together, and probably at that time I don't think we knew that we were going to be running a restaurant together at some point in life, but it's a very uh, serendipitous and awesome situation in itself. We like to do fun twists on old classics, things that we grew up eating, things that strike memories to us. The bone marrow sandwich came about, kind of how a lot of food ideas come about. Conversations that happen after work when we're talking about things that we would like eating. <laughs> What if we did a play on chicken liver mousse with peanut butter? And they just build from there. 
we don't want to follow the rules anymore. A typical restaurant is supposed to have the same food for X amount of time and you want to come have the same dish. Well, we kind of look at it like you enjoy us, follow us down that rabbit hole because we're going to do good things and we're going to change it constantly. This is, uh, the sun smells too loud. It is definitely boozy, definitely bitter, somewhere in the range of like a Negroni or a Boulevardier. We have a really great bar manager named Cyrus Fodevat, and he has a really creative spin on a lot of different classic cocktails. So we kind of work all different angles here. We go for simple, but sometimes we take a really long time to get there. Do you live in Willow Glen? Is I that don't. How you know this? No. Um, I live just. I live in the Rose Garden. Right. Live a Rose Garden adjacent, so I'm just right down the street from Willow Glen, not too far. Um, when I stumbled across Bray's, I was really, really excited. I think the first time we went there was for a special occasion, so we kind of blew it out of the water. I was able to explore the menu, and then I just kind of wanted to keep going back to explore the menu because it's always changing. Right. What was your experience, Sarush? Um, I loved it. It's got that very intimate, almost date night vibe to it. And we started out with the cheddar beignets, and those are incredible. They're hot. <laughs> They're soft, almost like donuts, with a rich cheddar cheese flavor and some honey kind of drizzled on it. It was terrific. She's smiling ear to ear. I like. dream about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and, and like I like that they have like a little bit of the yeast on top yeah. of them. So it's yeah. like every flavor just kind of explodes right there. And I always have it with the whiskey cocktail because I feel mm. like that's just a really nice combination. Yep. Mm -hmm. And their cocktail list is arranged by strength, which mm -hmm. I find really helpful. I tried this carbonated margarita. Mm -hmm. It was great. It was almost like a tequila seltzer. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. Never had anything like it before. But yeah, it was, it was yeah. delicious. What did you start with? Same thing, the cheddar beignets, and those are evil, and it's best that I don't live closer to them because they're really a problem. They would be you're a problem. A, well, you put um, cheddar and donut like right. things together mm -hmm. at a venue. And uh, we did have the cocktails which were fresh. You could tell again how those fresh fruits and um, we all tried different things and we all enjoyed what we mm -hmm. had. Um, for my entree, I got the uh, New York steak mm -hmm. and it came on a skillet shaped as a cow. <laughs> uh, very fitting. Um, it was cooked perfectly and it had this peppery outside to it. It was very simple, but I think a good steak kind of speaks for itself, and this certainly did. The pork chop is also really excellent as well. Like the steak, it's kind of the star of the show. It's cooked to perfection. There's little seasoning on it. The meat really speaks for itself. Right. My husband had the burger, which he loved. He said it was just really well seasoned. It was fresh. All the ingredients were good. I tasted his french fries, which were crispy and salty the way that a french fry should be. Um, I also, I felt I would have failed going to Braze and not getting something from their Braze menu, so I got the Braze Beets. Mm. You could tell that they put so much love into curating their ingredients. Everything on that plate was so fresh, but I have to say, there's no seasoning on it, so they really want the ingredients to shine. They, they don't even salt them. And I was expecting them to be warm, so I was kind of surprised that they were cold. And then they put um, this buttermilk dressing underneath it, but that also was very neutral tasting. Mm -hmm. I get the beets mm -hmm. and I, I love beets and I, I love like dirty beets. You know, I love, I, I actually really <laughs> like. Sounds like a really good book. <laughs> yeah. dirty, I love dirty beets. Dirty beets. I really do enjoy their mushroom dishes. So this time around I had the Mendocino Chanterelle mushroom polenta. Um, and the polenta was a creme fraiche polenta, so it was a lighter polenta. Um, the mushroom au jus is great because that's kind of like a gravy. I always say it's kind of a steak and potatoes for vegetarians, that dish. Mm -hmm. Then what I always like to get is the uh, PB&J bone marrow, and it's a showstopper. I mean, it's sweet and savory, really nail that sweet and savory with that thick walnut butter, but then the bone marrow and everything kind of comes together in this explosion. And I think it's a great dish that kind of segues into dessert. Anybody have room for dessert? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, take it away, Jackie. They did something that I think all the restaurants should do is little bites of dessert. Mm -hmm. So I got a tiny little chocolate pot de creme, which was topped with a toasted chewy marshmallow. We also had the mini chocolate pot de creme, which was just decadent. Yeah. It was kind of a, almost a mixture between 
s'mores and creme brulee. And the other thing that I thought was lovely was their coffee service. They deliver it in a French press, so that little French press cup of coffee and that delightful chocolatey, creamy, chewy bite of chocolate pot creme was the perfect way to end the meal. Right, well this is your restaurant, Brandy. Wrap it up for us. Yeah, if you are looking for a creative, chef-driven, uh, farm to table menu in the South Bay, go to Braves. <laughs> right in Sarouche? Uh, fresh seasonal ingredients, uh, hearty entrees, and a cool neighborhood vibe. Um, definitely go to Braves. All right, and Jackie? For ingredient focused food and the most wicked appetizer, go to Braves. If you would like to try Bray's, it's located on Lincoln Avenue at Meredith in San Jose. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday with brunch on weekends. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. I have to thank my fantastic guests on this week's show, Sarush Wadia, who brought us to the Tenderloin for an Ethiopian meal inspired by a grandmother's love at Tadu Ethiopian Kitchen, Jackie Frankel, who directed us to Alameda for elegant Afghan fusion cuisine at Angela's Kitchen, and Brandy Moody, who discovered a real neighborhood spot for upscale California cuisine at San Jose's Braze. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Good. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and my notes on the wines we're drinking today. Cheers. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check, Please! Bay Area. It's the transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com at Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union.